Man, I love the moon. Hmm. Would you say the moon is masculine or feminine? Spiritually speaking, I've most often heard that it embodies female energy. Me too, but we have Mother Nature full of life and creation. Wouldn't the moon be the father? Yeah, you might think so. However, our celestial father is most definitely the sun. It's because of our father above and our mother below that allows all of this life to exist. The moon is actually neither, which makes me think it must be more like a cousin. But perhaps what's more curious about old Lady Luna is that her existence has actually never been explained by modern science. Who needs science to explain things? <laughs> right, I mean, I know you don't. But isn't it interesting that using science we can build nuclear weapons, but cannot even explain this most ancient entity that floats at our doorstep? What's stranger? The moon is actually far too big to be a natural satellite of the Earth. If I'm not mistaken, there is not a single other planet in our solar system whose moon compares in ratio to our own Earth-Moon ratio. Our moon is actually larger than Pluto. The current leading theory in science is that something like a Mars-sized planet like rock came out of nowhere and hit the Earth, and then it became the moon. And when those physics didn't work out, they came up with a new theory that said that the same planet-like rock-like thing hits the planet, bounces around, and then hits it again, and then becomes the moon. Needless to say, the physics still didn't work. Well, what the hell? Is there more? Well, now that you ask, have you ever heard anything about it being hollow? Hollow? Yeah, I've got the details somewhere here. Uh, let's see. Here it is. In November of 1969, NASA crashed a lunar module into the moon, causing the equivalent of one ton of TNT. NASA said that the moon reverberated like a gong for half an hour. Then they did it again, causing an impact of 11 and a half tons of TNT and it rang like a bell for over four hours. It vibrated in a way as if it were hollowed out with giant hydraulic damper struts inside of it. Wowzy wheezy. Want to know something else? Always. The surface of the moon contains minerals like titanium, but also processed metals like brass and mica. It also contains something called uranium-236 and neptuminium, which are both minerals that have never been found to occur naturally. Uranium-236 is a long-lived nuclear waste that appears in spent nuclear fuel. And neptuminium is a radioactive byproduct of nuclear reactors when plutonium is being created. This means that at least some of the rocks on the moon are most likely synthetic. And while it's only a theory, I wouldn't say it's illogical to come to the conclusion that it could be artificially created. That's really intense. Also, you know the craters on the moon? Intimately. Well, craters should vary in depth due to the size and impact of the various space rocks that hit them, right? We can tell that there was a difference in the meteor sizes that hit the moon by the diameters of each crater. And yet, how come all of them across the board are the same depth? Mother of God, an impenetrable shell. <laughs> Look at that quote from a NASA scientist. It's easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than to explain its existence. <laughs> Here's another one. The best explanation for the moon is observational error. The moon does not exist. <laughs> Oh, oh, here, read this part here. David Icke's research led him to shaman around the world. Zulu tribes speak of the moon being an egg. They symbolize it to be an egg for good reason. The ancient African and Sumerian legends talk of two brothers, Wawain and Mepenku, that emptied out the yoke and rolled the moon across the sky to the earth and caused cataclysmic events hundreds of generations before our time. Hmm, I'm not sure how it fits, but this says here that the rocks on the moon are older than the earth itself. Heavens. You know, I think I've only ever seen one side of the moon. I wonder why it doesn't spin like other planets. That's a good question. On that topic too, have you ever noticed that the size and position of the moon is exactly in the right place to create a perfect solar eclipse? That's so intense. You know, the moon actually holds the Earth in a sideways tilt. If we didn't have the moon, we wouldn't have the same length of days or nights, or experience the four seasons like we do. It also intimately controls the tides. You're right. And just like the tides, it even bends the water in our bodies. That's why on nights of the full moon, there's always an increase of violent crimes and probably passionate love. It used to be a legal defense to say that one was moonstruck. Do you think these things were deliberately introduced to the earth? Maybe for a purpose? It's a possibility. What do you think that purpose could be? Well. They say that the beings who put it there were trying to bring a new frequency to the planet, or maybe even provide us with some sort of resonation or gravitational wave that was vital for our survival. I've read that the Earth isn't even in the right place in the solar system anymore. 
The story goes that at one point, the Earth used to exist between Mars and Jupiter, and may have even been slightly larger than it is today. But it was hit, and it flew off course, creating the asteroid belt, which is mostly frozen water and rock debris, and wound up in a new orbit, right here. But because of the impact of what happened, this planet was going to die, and it needed some help to keep it spinning and keep its orbit proper. And thus, the moon was put there by some advanced alien race or a higher form of consciousness who saw it as a requirement for the planet's survival. Maybe even our own survival, which would explain why the Earth to moon ratio is found within the human energy field. Then events such as the falling of Atlantis and rising back to consciousness could take place under circumstances that otherwise couldn't have happened. That's really amazing. Wait, did you say that the human geometries match the Earth and the moon ratio? Hey, I think you're really gonna love this. In Drimbalo's Flower of Life books, he shows these drawings here. As you can see, this is the egg of life, mapped over Leonardo da Vinci's Canon of Man, along with a proportionate eight by eight grid. Around the egg of life, you see two rings. This is the Zona Pellucida, the membrane around the structure. Okay, so I get that those things are important sacred geometry that are connected somehow, but I don't see the link yet. It's okay, we're just getting started. First, we have to identify the male and female side of the equation. On the top level, you have a circle and a square. They fractal down to the eight physical spheres and the eight by eight grid of squares. See how you can draw a circle that fits perfectly inside of these circles? And you'll get a circle that's just slightly smaller than the four squares put together. It just so happens to also fit perfectly around the edge, balancing between the inner circles and the outer larger circle. Now, if we take the four squares and use them as a measure, we can create a new circle, slightly larger than the smaller one we just drew. If we move it to the top, it pushes out beyond the inner circle a little bit, and what we're left with is the inner and outer edge of the Zona Pellucida, and a delineation of the human energy field. This is the location of the 13th chakra, by the way, at the very top of our energy field above our head. Now, nobody knows where this next part I'm about to show you actually comes from. The earliest source, Lawrence Blair, claims that he got it from older work, but using the tip of the Zona Pellucida as a radial point between it and the square to create a new sphere, this then delineates the field of the 13th chakra. The ratio between this new sphere and a sphere based off of this square, the physical form of the Earth, is the exact same ratio as that of the Earth and the Moon. You'll also notice too, that the Zona Pellucida has actually merged with the square around the body and planet to create the phi ratio. It's a bridge to a higher consciousness. Whoa. So what's the importance of these numbers? In the circle and square diagram, to create the phi ratio, the circumference of a circle must be equal to the perimeter of a square. When you calculate the perimeter of the square that would be around the physical Earth, it comes to 31,680 miles, which is the diameter of the Earth times four. To get the circle around the Earth is a little bit more tricky because you have the moon's involvement. You have to imagine the moon is perfectly placed against the Earth without going into it at all. Then we take the diameter of the Earth and the diameter of the moon, add them together and multiply by pi. It comes out at 31,667. Holy crap, they're almost the exact same numbers. Exactly. There's a 13 mile difference, but 13 miles is nothing when you consider that the ocean rises nearly 27 miles around the equator. So what does all of this mean to us, Mr. Patch? <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? I guess it means that the moon is not just this random satellite that has nothing to do with us. It's there for a reason, for a chance. A chance that we might just make the most important decision that we've ever made as a species and create together a new way of life on this planet. It's up to the collective, to all of mankind. Do we choose love or do we choose chaos and war? Maybe a little bit of both from the looks of it right now, but times are changing. This isn't the old world anymore. It's now a matter of survival and collaboration. The moon appears to offer us the opportunity to change, to become aware, to grow. But it won't make the decision for us. That's up to us. <laughs> okay, okay. You've officially blown my mind hole clean off. This seems to be evidence of a long lost secret that has to do with our evolution. I wonder if we will realize this mystery in this lifetime. Either way, I still love the moon, man. Me too. Want some beans? More than anything ever, Mr. Patch. Anything ever. <laughs>